Hi, my name is Wendell Fitzgerald. Uh, I am uh, currently the president uh, of the board of the Henry George School, which is a non small nonprofit educational organization out of San Francisco. We've been teaching the fundam fundamental economics based on the ideas of, of a fellow by the name of Henry George, a 19th century uh, so, uh, political economist and social philosopher. Uh, he asked the question, how come there's so much poverty amid so much progress? Uh, and that was true in his day. He wrote this in the 19th. He wrote this book that he wrote, Progress and Poverty, in uh, 1879. And it was true then, and it's true now. How come there's so much poverty in the world, despite all this abundance that we've created? And his answer is very simple. Without exp you know, we'll go right to the the conclusion that he came to, is that uh, there's three factors in production: land, labor, and capital. And it's the land, f the land portion of of the, the factors of production that, that is the problem. He is saying, this is what he's suggesting, uh, that w when his, his uh, uh, idea would, would be put into to practice, uh, w w if you wanted a piece of land, you could get that land for free. You wouldn't have to pay for it. The, condi the only condition then would be that you paid to the community uh, a 100 percent of the current rental value of land uh, as determined by the market. Uh, and it's, uh, everybody knows what the rental value of land is. Assessors can assess it. Uh, uh, if if a, a homeowner isn't renting his land, it can be determined very easily. All the economists agree. All assessors agree. So that if you own a piece of land, you can get it for free, do with it what you need to do, build a house on it, work on it, farm on it, whatever, all kinds of use. It, it, nothing goes on except that it goes on top of, uh, it takes place on land. But you can have that f for no upfront cost with the condition that you pay on a yearly basis through the mechanism of, of a changed, uh, a reformed property tax, um, the 100 percent of the rental value of land. Uh, and in exchange for that, the community the, would not tax your house the way they do now through the property tax. There would be no tax on your wages through any kind of income tax. There would be no tax, no sales taxes, no taxes, uh, any other kinds of taxes that fall on, on your business or any activity or anything that's created. So uh, the idea that George had was that uh, be, because land value is created by the community, it is the premier source, the prime source of revenue for the community. Uh, now that's the discussion we can talk about later about how land comes to have a value, but suffice it to say that 100% of all economists have agreed from the beginning time of uh, Adam Smith through David Ricardo and John Stuart Mill up to all economists now, they all agree that land value is created 100% by the community. And since the community need, needs a source of revenue to pay for community services, all of which increase land value, assessing against land value makes is the most just form of taxation. Um, and elimination of taxes on labor and capital uh, is further justice. So um, uh, the reason he suggested this, he said, well, if you did this, this would, this would solve the problem of poverty. And it would solve a number of other incredibly important and difficult, otherwise unsolvable problems that we've discovered since the time he wrote. In the hundred year plus years since he wrote, we've got now uh, huge uh, social problems. We've got problems of urban blight. We've got problems of urban sprawl. We've got massive uh, abuse of the environment. And all of that is about uh, the land issue. So w one of the effects that, uh, of uh, in having a very high price of holding land and no other taxation is that, uh, and where this has been done, this is, uh, this, this is the, not only is the theory interesting and wonderful, but in practice it works out. Uh, where, you, where you tax land more heavily, cities rebuild themselves from the inside out. Where you tax land heavily, urban sprawl stops. When you tax land heavily, people stop uh, buying and selling as land for speculative purposes. They, they only use land or buy land for actual uh, legitimate legal use rather than the regime now, which is in place, is people buy land and natural resources to speculate with them. So the current cost, the market cost of land, is incredibly high, not only because there's a, a base market price based on population and all, all the services that are provided to land through uh, governments, uh, but then people are willing to pay more for land than it's worth actually really real value. So now land has a huge speculative value. And by, t by making people uh, pay for the rental value of land, it, it eliminates the possibility of 
um, uh, of uh, speculating in land or any it takes away the incentive for using land other than actual real use uh, and when you when you think about this this eliminates the free lunch in the economy the the, the individual landowners pocketing the value of land that's created by the community is a free lunch to them it's a totally unearned income labor completely earns its reward uh, real capital investment, that's a completely earned reward. You build a factory to produce a good or a service, uh, that, those, are, those are earned incomes from labor and capital. The, the, the income from uh, ownership of land, uh, whether you rent it or buy and sell it, that's all totally unearned because it's created by somebody else other than the owner of land. So the idea is, uh, if, if we all, ha if we shared, and this, is, uh, this idea was, is based on the idea that uh, humanity, uh, this is humanity's home, the, the entire planet. Uh, if the land can be said, if the earth can be said to belong to anybody, it belongs to all humanity in common. Everybody has a, an equal share in it, has the right of equal access to it. Nobody has any right uh, uh, of any kind, although it's legal now for some, some small group of people to own land and charge access to the rest of us for access to it. How that came about is, is a very interesting story. And the bottom line of that is it's all land laws currently are really the laws of the conqueror. So uh, over a period, a very long period of time, going back hundreds, certainly, certainly hundreds, but maybe thousands of years, humanity has been traumatized by conquerors who have conquered land, said that they own it, and reduced the, the, the populations to, to slavery or peasanthood. So the peasants get to pay the rent, and the folks at the top, the nobility in the old, in the old days, and now the very wealthy, uh, currently uh, uh, the, the basis of the great disparity of wealth is the unearned income from land and natural resources. The fact that you might uh, be a homeowner and a landowner doesn't mean very much if you have a huge mortgage on your house. Uh, so yeah, everybody has a title to a piece, uh, homeowners have a title to a piece of land, but they're not the ones who are uh, uh, making out like bandits. It's the real estate speculators, it's the folks at the top, it's the big oil companies. Oil is land in economics. All of the value of oil before it's pumped out of the ground, which is huge, billions of hundreds of billions of dollars, that value is created by us because we need oil, we have a demand, before they even pump it out of the ground. And people buy and sell the rights to own that uh, oil in the ground. The nations own it. So insofar as a nation owns uh, its oil, I mean, and uh, it, should, it should be collecting that value from, from when, the, when it's pumped, should be a tax on the, on the value of it in, uh, before it's distributed, and use that money used to pay for government services. Now, in fact, that's what Alaska does here, and there's another, I think, in New Mexico does something like that as well, but uh, perhaps uh, you've heard of the fact that Alaska has a, a yearly, uh, they, Alaska pays a, a dividend to every citizen in the state based on uh, the tax, the revenues from, from oil, and it's, that's only fair. They don't have, I'm not sure about what other taxes they have, but this, this is a, a prime example of, uh, of this kind of thinking in action.